Hello everybody. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> my hair looks so bad today. So, yeah, please ignore my hair. Hi. Just waiting for some people to get here. This is like the worst place in my whole apartment <laughs> with um, Wi-Fi, so if I'm ever gonna be gone, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry beforehand. I'm right on time. I mean, I'm German, so I have to be. <laughs> my day was pretty relaxed. It was like one of the first days and weeks where I just did nothing. I mean, okay, I didn't do nothing. I answered some emails and did some phone calls and stuff like this. Hello, Nico. Um, but <laughs> like just light work, not, not too much. I only speak English and German, Charlotte. So one thing before I restart, the live stream I will wait till everyone is getting here. Um, I I wanted to ask if people would want me to do a live stream in German. Um, some people told me that it kind of annoys them that I always speak English and even though they understand why I do it, they would be really grateful if I would do one live stream in German one day because not all people who speak or all people who are from Germany speak English very well and I do tend to speak really fast so I was wondering if you guys would be okay if I do a live stream in German not this one but maybe one one day okay one is already against it <laughs> one is here for it <laughs> okay you wouldn't understand anything. I know there's like a big culture of translation. I don't want to like um, push people to translate my whole live stream. Um, but I think. Yeah, you wouldn't understand it. Mm. I mean, I'm comfortable with both. I'm comfortable with speaking English. It's just that I would want, like, I understand that people would want me to do one in German if they, like, have questions that I maybe answered in English, but they never understood it, which... Trans... Trans... Petters... <laughs> what? <laughs> Did I say it wrong? I know I can do what I want, it's just that I like to see how you guys feel about it. In the end of the day, I make the decision by myself, it's just that... <laughs> uh, it was just something I wanted to put out there. So you guys are maybe prepared if I do one in German soon. <laughs> I always save the live streams if they're not awkward. Don't worry. And some people would be able to hear me speak German for a long time. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm so awkward right now. I'm so sorry. I'm just really low en energy today. <clears throat> Hope I'm not getting sick. <laughs> Deutschland with Lucas. Yes, I can give you German lessons, everybody. <laughs> How late did I stay up last night? I don't know. I mean, it wasn't late. <laughs> yeah, some people can do both. So, 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 so. 
Okay, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> I just feels really weird, like, the last two live streams were with other people, and it was, like, so high energy, and everyone was like, Ooh! <laughs> like, ugh, and I'm alone again. A little bit more low energy. Just chilling. <laughs> the lighting is really bad. But I wanted to sit on my couch today. I didn't feel the chair. The sh chair. The sh chair? Chair. I felt like I said something else, but I meant chair. Answer questions. Yeah, give me questions. I will answer questions. I mean, I... Some people are maybe here from Twitter. We had a little discussion. Maybe more. What, what, it wasn't a discussion yet. That's why I wanted to do a discussion. Or just like a conversation. It's more like it today. Because yesterday on Twitter I tweeted um, a few things that I inspired me or that ca came in my mind that actually really mean a lot or like resonate with me a lot. So, and some people had some really interesting opinions on it, which I wanted to discuss, but I w didn't want to do it, like, for every single one on Twitter, and also in written word, which has room to interpretation, which is good, I guess, for poetry and stuff like that, but not really for bringing a point across or having a c good conversation, which is actually one of the reasons why I don't really write a lot with friends on WhatsApp and stuff like that, because I like to call um i think just wrote like spoken word is easier to get across than just written stuff any plans for october i'm filming october for two movies and what else am i doing to october do i do something else in october I'm probably going to the film fest in Hamburg. Do you watch Euphoria? Someone actually um, suggested it to me, but it, it's on HBO and I don't know how to watch something from HBO on in Germany. Okay, can we... Is there someone wanting to talk about Twitter? <laughs> we don't have to if we if we like have other things to talk about, but um what's her name? Anna. I'm playing on two movies. Um that I'm filming this summer. I would be really interested to doing English-speaking world which is why I have an international agency. Mm. My next project as a director. Well, I can't really tell you much about it because it's not safe that it's going to be done. And if I give you a hint of something, then you want it. And I can't promise you that you will get it. So I'm just going to say that I have a project which maybe one day will be realized, I don't know, that I've now been working on for, I think, about a year. Hello, Mila, I love you. Miss you and I hope you have a great time in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next product as a director as an alien fan. No, I think you mixed something up there. What is easier, acting or directing? I think they both have their challenges. Um, I mean, for me now, probably directing is harder just because I don't have as much experience in directing as I'm have in acting. I miss you too. A lot. <laughs> have you read Ari and Dante um I read a lot of tweets about it 
I actually have not. That's why I didn't answer the question yet. I don't want to disappoint people when they ask me something like that. Is Michelangelo your real boyfriend? No. If you could travel in time, where would you go? I would go in the future because you can learn about the past a lot. Like you can read books, you can watch movies about it. You can go, like if you're really interested, like uh, go to the different places in the world where there's still artifacts or buildings from those time zones. Like you can find out a lot about the past, but nothing about the future. So I would go in the future. I don't have to choose. I miss the calm lives too. I mean, I love doing them with Carl and me, but, but this is just really different. Youth Mondays, yeah. I'm going to this Youth Mondays festival in November, which um, is going to be really cool. It's about very much different topics that are important for our young generation, like climate change, LGBT rights. I'm really excited for it. I mean, I'm not really against tattoos per se. Um, it's just that in my job, it's not really like, it can kind of like make it harder to get jobs. I mean, obviously you can cover it up, but I don't know, I just I just always felt like I would try to stay pretty um, like a blank surface, black canvas. So that's why I don't really do that. I have the piercing, but I can take it out and it's like it was never there. What's your favorite place in Germany? Probably Hamburg. <laughs> I really love Hamburg. It's really pretty. I going to act in German or an English movie? I'm not going to film. I'm gonna act in German. <laughs> I actually tried starting to watch Doctor Who, but um, on Netflix, it like in the time when I tried to start, it only had like season four or something, and I started with the first episode, and I was so confused and. Like, nothing really made sense to me, so I stopped, because <laughs> uh, I didn't really get it. I'm good today, love. I'm actually kind of... I'm, I'm not... Um, some people, when I'm this low energy, think I'm sad. I'm just really relaxed right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, the rainbow team events yeah I'm really excited for um, high on scum it's gonna be amazing I just can't wait I did start watching Supernatural with my mother and I think she watched it through or something or not through but kept on watching Um, I didn't it's like even with like books or something when you're when the series has like so many seasons, I just kind of like, it gets a little bit too much for me. And I don't have the time. And then I maybe I, I watch the first season or something and then I like forget about it and stop. So that's kind of like, why I'm not really. What's your sign today? What could be my sign today? Did I have this one yet? Or maybe like Spider-Man, like that's my sign of the day. But you actually know my sign now. Oh my God, wait a second. You all annoyed me like <laughs> a lot about my sign. Like now you gotta tell me, like what does it mean? All the gays or everyone else, tell me what does it mean that I'm a Leo? What does that change for our relationship? 
I miss you too, Milo. Yeah, blue, blue tactic, blue tactic, is that how you want to pronounce it? It's true, like everyone's like asking, did I watch that show, did I watch that show? <laughs> mm. Leo means you're like a natural leader and stuff, I think. I'm a natural leader. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, I'm a fake gay. Same. I'm outgoing. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just stop bullying me with Swedish. I can't do it. <laughs> Usually Leo is annoying me a lot, but you are an exception. <laughs> Maybe I can still get to that point where I'm annoying you. open and kind aren't they like bad traits like am I just like generally stupid I'm passionate oh my god do you like Taylor Swift yes like I know <laughs> that's so funny because I wanted to th like I read something about I don't know what it was like do I like this person or that person I had to think about like this people were asking me like questions with my favorite song Taylor Swift and I said um I can tell you like which song I like the least um it's not that I hate Taylor Swift it's just that I didn't really enjoy the new song with Brendan Yuri and I think it's really interesting how in our internet culture everything is getting like cancelled right away like you don't like this you're you hate her like you don't like the music the song so much you obviously hate the artist it's like everything is always like so extreme and it's it has to be hate it has to be a phobia it has to be discrimination it has to be racism it's like just doing one mistake or saying one thing that's not completely positive about something doesn't make you completely negative about something like these assumptions actually make it harder to set put us like a step back because it's like putting someone in a box um right away if they say something like you don't like that song, you're hate Taylor Swift. I know it's a, like, it's a good example and also a bad example, but I think you know what I mean, right? Like, this cancel culture is like, what's going on? <laughs> it's like, I don't get it. And I don't even like, if you like the song or if you think it's bad as well, that's fine. Like, no worries. <laughs> it's just that I didn't like the song, which doesn't make me hate Taylor Swift. I can go to like a LGBT whatever party event, whatever, and dance to Shake It Off. Like, it's like, it's so toxic to always immediately put a label on someone saying, oh, you hate this because you don't like this. Or because you said something wrong there, you are obviously wrong. In your whole way like that's just cancel culture yeah exactly it makes it hard for people to understand their mistakes i maybe shouldn't have used the word hate the song maybe that was a little bit lightly and i get that totally but you know the end of the day assuming right away that i hate taylor swift is like it's a step too much, you know. I think sometimes we take something, not even out of context, it can be in context, but like take something and then spin this whole thing around it, like spin this whole conspiracy theory around it. I could give a good example, but I'm not gonna because I really try to keep this fictional world away from me at the moment. I'm gonna talk about it on conventions and stuff like that. So then we can talk about um, the elephant in the room kind of. But um, I think just like taking something that doesn't, that's, that's like not even actually like pinpointing to that and making the whole thing out of it and making your own conspiracy theory because you kind of want something that you can pick on or 
find a reason, not not on a bad behavior, just because it m makes you feel good to feel like you expose something or you look through something, which is fine and which is a total normal behavior. I don't shame or like don't criticize anyone for having that behavior. It's just that it can be really toxic, and if you reflect on it and like look in your past and think, oh well, where did I maybe block a chance of something actually being good just because I spun this whole web of what that it has to be bad or that reason is like um like that has to evolve on something that's not what I want so yeah cancel culture is like um if someone likes does something there's one thing that you don't agree with or that seems like um it could be I don't know but if you like take it out of context or if it's um if you take it too seriously discriminating or something like that um just like canceling the whole person like saying oh my god i'm saying like so much i'm really sorry it's when i talk too much and too fast um just completely canceling a person after just one thing that they did that could be considered bad which they maybe even not knowingly did like they don't know that they did it or maybe they didn't mean to do it so it's just like it could be a, a usual mistake, like every one of us does, but it's made to be this whole thing that defines the person and defines who they are and what they're allowed to be in the future. Like if you got cancelled once, you can't be open-minded because everyone's going to look back and that he did that one thing, you know, and it's just like, it, it's just something that really gets pushed up to something that's way bigger than it actually is. And it's really ch challenging. Okay, there was a lot of ranting. I'm sorry. I'm going to wait for the comments to kind of catch up. What do you want as a present at cons? If you, even you don't want them, you will always bring some, so... Okay, so, um, <laughs> I just tried this question thing for the first time, so let's try this. Um, what do you want as a present? I don't actually want presents, you guys, like, you guys are already coming and that's like a big present and I know some of you actually take a lot of financial, um, like, take a lot of money in your hands to come and I just want you to have the best experience ever and to actually meet the people that you want to meet which is why you're coming. So don't feel obligated to give me anything, um, especially if it costs a lot of money. I don't, I don't need that. And I'm just, I just so like for that I get to meet you guys. So please don't feel obligated and don't do it if you don't think it like financially is good. So I just wanted to, oh my God, I used a, I used a tool of Instagram. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Papier Kuck aus Bayern ist immer ein stabiles Geschenk. <lacht> ja. I wish I could give you a hug. Oh, Packway, I'm gonna give you a virtual hug. <lacht> I look so comfy, yes, I'm wearing my comfy sweater, even though it's like, it rained two seconds ago, now the sun is shining, which is good for the lighting, but now it's getting warm, but I love this sweater so much, um, I bought it um, while we were filming my season, and it was like my, my little comfy sweater after filming. <laughs> I 
I have no idea what you just said in German, but it was so beautiful. Oh, <laughs> I said that uh, uh, beer is always a good choice for a present. <laughs> so I'm glad that sounded beautiful to you. <laughs> My season, yeah, I'm sorry I said that. It's not my season. With my season, I meant season three, my friends. You know that. Why would I buy this in the summer? Victoria. Uh, I'm not, I, I don't think I am shoulding you a mama. I gave just like a virtual hug to everybody, so everybody has been hugged now. I'm sorry if you didn't want to be hugged, but yeah, it happened, guys. It happened. It's so interesting. Like every live stream, literally every, every time someone asks me, this hurts. It doesn't hurt, really. Is actors class in school good way to try to be an actor? Um, I had acting class in school. I had it as um, one of my additional subjects um, and something that you might w would probably call high school. And it was good, but it's very different to what you would learn in, um, in an action, acting school. I did acting school when I was 10, till I was 12. And you learn a lot more um, techniques and different methods on how to achieve different emotional states or get close to a character. What do you consider doing Broadway? What would be your dream stage role? I would love to do Broadway. In the moment, it's just I can't really um, find the time to study acting, which is something you have to do to play in the big theaters. But um, yeah, for me and my dream role, that's hard. Maybe, I mean, I really wanted to play Kolok from Tanz der Vampire. Or, um, what would be good as well? I know so many Broadway's guys, but I can't find my favorite role right now. <laughs> but Kolog is kind of like, I grew up with that one, so I guess that's that. What do you like to do most in front of a camera at least? I think this is like talking about acting, I guess. Um, bu -bu -bu. That's weird. It's like a re weird question kind of, but I find it interesting. I mean, I like, right, what do I like acting in front of a camera? Probably like really emotional scenes just because I forget about the camera in, in those cases. When it's like really technical. I think like seeing the result later on is really interesting because sometimes if you act a scene, you um, have to look a certain way or in a certain direction for the camera, which is actually not the direction your acting partner is standing. So you're kind of like playing with the wall or with the dot. And I did that a few times in my career so far. And that is obviously interesting because watching it later on, it seems so natural, but you actually just been playing like with a dot, like <laughs> with like nothing that gives you an expression. It's really interesting.
people want him to have an opinion on everything. <laughs> I probably have an opinion on everything, but I just don't want to like always share it because I think I'm sometimes influencing and I don't want to be influencing you guys to have a certain opinion. I'm just going to influence you guys to have conversations. Oh, I love playing villains. I always do play villains in theater, for example, except yes, except Roman Juliet, but like school theater, I always played the villain. <laughs> But I'm a really good villain, I guess. I really like to be the bad guy. What kind of movies or series do you love to play in? I mean, I didn't really play in much yet, but what I really would want to play in is like um, sci-fi or something or fantasy because I love reading fantasy novels so like playing in a fantasy series or film would be amazing mm. means you're not a bad guy in real life lol um I don't know I mean I've been called an asshole a few times in my life but I don't think I'm a bad guy. I'm just a Slytherin, let's say it like that. So, the tweets. Yeah, do we have questions about the tweets or about what we're, we're talking about? Did you see the new version of Lion King? I actually saw it, yes. I mean, I'm not really... I, I wasn't really all for the live action remakes. I think Disney is like a really amazing company like for the films that they're doing. And I think they should like do new characters and new stories. And I think that's kind of what Disney was about. But um, I think that the, the opportunity to see Lion King in cinema just like on a big screen with the music and everything was really great. What tweets? What are the tweets? Um, oh god, now I have to like quote them. I don't know, what did I, what did I tweet? I tweeted... Um that I don't understand how people are want the world to change without be willing to changing it. I think that's kind of what I said. Which kind of plays on what I think is really popular, popular at the moment, which is living in your own little bubble of LGBT acceptance, stuff like that, which is great and which is important to have. But not actually actively going outside of that to have conversations with the society that LGBT people, in my opinion, and this is... Okay, before I'm going to continue, what I'm about to say... <laughs> this is so serious, right? What I'm about to say is so silly, in my opinion. I am not a specialist. I am not a social, like, uh, like, um like a specialist on any of this I'm not a therapist I'm not whatever what I'm saying is just what I've been experiencing what I have been seeing in the last couple of years and actually this opinion that I have right now in this moment can obviously change in the next couple of years and it has been different it has been really different I have been very very extremely liberal and not in a like political way, but like in a, I accept everything and everyone and everything is amazing and I shouldn't explain myself to anybody way. And I've been, ha I had that right after I came out or right after I started to really understand what, what was wrong with me, like wrong that I'm transgender and stuff like that. But now my opinion has kind of changed a bit. So I wanted to say a bit about that. So 
I am still <laughs> a liberal person. I am still someone who says, I think that people should be allowed to be themselves and be open about themselves and be that the, the true self that they can be. That's obviously something that's achievable and that's it's something that is important for each of us and really important to us. But what I tend to see is people who live their true identity and their sexuality, their gender, whatever it is, and live in their little bubble of other people who understand that. I know, my hands. Um, sorry, okay, I'm trying to concentrate now. Other people who understand that and know them already because they may be gone through that experience together. And then when they look outside of their bubble, seeing people from the outside society not understanding what they are going through and just claiming them to be um, discriminating against them just because they don't understand or get them right away. I think that's wrong. Period. I think what's happening there is you live in your little bubble and everyone understands you because you went through a process together or you are really talkative with one another because you trust each other more because you're all in the same community about LGBT and stuff like that. But then when you go outside of your bubble, you get like shocked because those people don't understand it and don't get it. But it's not their fault per se. I mean, I don't know a lot about what it's like to um, be a person that's maybe like born really short. Like, um, I don't know the scientific term, so I don't want to say something wrong. Exactly, I don't know much about it. But they have a lot of challenges and there are people in film industry who actually um, educate about that and talk about it, which helps me understand it better and what struggles they are going through. I would never, in my life, I don't know anyone who has that problem, who's been born with that disability. So I can't know about it. And if I talk to them, especially in English, because I don't know, I know the German word Kleinwüchsig, but I don't know the English word for it. So I don't know how to talk to them. And maybe we'll say something wrong. They, like, I'm not a racist person. I'm not discriminating and like racist. That doesn't fit there. I'm not a discriminating person. I'm not discriminating against them. I just don't know about it. So that's why when you're in an LGBT community and you go out of that, so people who are not LGBT, they don't know about it because they maybe have never met a person in their lives that's LGBT the way you are. And there are so many different shades to being LGBT. Of course, you can't have an overlook to everything. I don't know everything that's out there and sometimes I don't understand everything that's out there in the LGBT community. So the only thing I can do is ask the person. If you don't want to talk about it, of course, that's your decision. What I'm trying to do here is encourage you to maybe try to be a little bit more open to the idea that some people, if they ask questions, I just want to educate themselves. I know it's really hard. <laughs> sometimes to have those questions and me myself I don't I don't like like being out there every day like uh, with my ID and having to explain myself every single time nobody would like that that's totally normal so that's that's valid and fine and okay but if we start like blocking off and not answering any questions anymore and just keeping silent and staying in our little bubble this wish that's always expressed by the LGBT community to be a part of society and be accepted and be normalized, that wish is never going to be true. And I would love, I would love to live in this utopia where everything is just going to change one day and they will just go and read a book about every gender and all, every sexuality that's out there and that they are going to be the ones who change themselves. But that's not the society we live in. That's not how our society works. It doesn't. And I'm trying to do a part by being out there and talking about transgender and 
making it a little bit more normalized in Germany by doing this role and doing the interviews and doing all of that stuff. But I can't like put that whole weight on my shoulders and I shouldn't because we all are able to do something. Even if you're not an actor or an influencer or whatever, like even if you're not a politician, just changing the opinion of two people in your life can change everything because they will have children and they their children will understand. This is not a thing about just changing it from today to tomorrow. It's about changing it for the next generation and the generation after that. That's what it's about. It's a slow process, but it's a process that we have to keep on going. And if we start to, because our, our group is getting bigger and we are, feel like there are more people and especially through the internet, we are connected to way more LGBT people. So we feel like we are not alone and we don't need the others. That's actually not what we were looking for years ago. We are putting ourselves back. If we now start to say, oh, well, my community is big enough with internet and the people that I met around here to, to say, oh, I don't have to talk to them anymore. I don't have to um, be the person who tells them how who I am anymore because I have my people, but also be the person who says, oh, I'm oppressed. I get discriminated against. Why don't they understand? Because we are shutting them out. And it, it's the other way around. Obviously, there are so many people who are so close-minded, who are um, not open to the idea of what LGBT is. And I get that, and I see that, and I, that's totally true. But even if it's just one out of ten people who gets it afterwards, that makes such a difference. It's such a big difference. And if we give up now, just because we are <laughs> we get discouraged by being pushed back and having people shut doors in our face or um, say bad things to us, then we're not going to change anything, ever. You know, after the first episode came out, or not even the episode, after the first clip came out where I um, walk in this hallway, like people wrote me like they want to kill me, that I should kill myself because I'm destroying this image of what the original had. I am not a real man. I didn't get this role because I'm able to act. I did get this role because I am this gender or whatever and I didn't even know if the character was transgender they they told me they knew because I'm transgender they told me so many so much stuff that they knew would hurt me like making my making my make comments about my body about my voice about how I look about how I talk about how skinny I am or not and those things like those were things that were angled especially against breaking me and against breaking my spirit and breaking my will to change something. And if I would let these things bring me down, hurt me or bring myself to stop trying, that would be tragic because look what we were able to change and how many people we were able to reach through this decision to do this and through the decision, through my decision to actually put myself out there and do this. This became so big and so many people told me that it helped them. And if, even if it was just one person who told me it helped them, that would have been enough. You know, guys, like if everything and every comment that's bad for me, like equals like one good comment, I did my part. I And you can do that too. It's not about doing big things and not always has to be like being in a big franchise or something like that. It can be like going to your local LGBT like youth uh, meetup and just inviting some cisgendered straight people. I know it's weird, but just giving them an open door to our world too, so they can do the same. We have to do this together and we have to be strong together and together n includes people who are not LGBT. Allies, allies have a place in the LGBTQI plus community. They have a place and they are valid and they should be celebrated as well. I know that in our history, it always was those people who made it hard on us 
But if we do the same as they did to us by pushing them away, um, isolating ourselves from them and saying they are not on our level, we are repeating what history has shown to be a bad method to bring our society together. Accepting them in our community and welcoming them to understand and be a part of this beautiful thing that is LGBT. That is what will bring us forward in our community. I think that is what brings us forward in our society. And that's what brings us forward in humanity. It's something that can make us all stronger and <laughs> which can make this world just a little bit of a better place, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm not trying to pressure anyone to put themselves out there, especially if you're not in a safe place, especially if you're not safe with yourself. This speech, or my words, they wouldn't have resonated with me the way they do today, three years ago. I was a different person. I was way more insecure. I was scared and I didn't even know myself. So how could I explain what I am if I don't even know myself to other people? That doesn't make sense. So just finding yourself before you talk to people is the right way, obviously. And I totally support people saying, I don't, I can't do that. I can't. I don't feel comfortable with myself right now to go out there and talk to a random person on the street. That's not what I'm saying, but you know what I mean? And that is something that I want to make clear. When I talk about saying you should go out there and you should talk and you should be open and you should try to educate, that's something I'm saying from a place where I'm safe enough to do that and where I'm just trying to encourage the people who have the same safe place to do the same. But I'm never trying to say, put yourself at risk because you have to do something for someone else. In the end of the day, what I'm trying to get across, it's that going out there, talking to people who are not part of this community in general and making them understand it better by just maybe doing a project. You don't even have to talk to them like face to face, but do something, put something out there that can be like uh, uh, can be helpful that that is something that you actually do not because they need it because also we need it you understand that like i am kind of selfish for going out there and explaining to someone that has a question or something like that what transgender means and it sounds weird, but it's actually kind of true because in the end of the day, I want them to understand it so I have an easier life. I want to have a life where I don't have to explain myself. So I'm going to do this now while I'm still young, while I still have the energy to do so. So when I'm old and a grandpa of my grandchildren, I don't have to go to anyone and explain myself anymore, you know? That's the dream I have and it's kind of a selfish dream <laughs> but it's the thing I want for my life and for the life of my children or the life of any any young kid that's transgender like when I got the um, invitation or the casting call for David I'm saying his name now um, I didn't play this role for all the people that help, I helped with it. I'm so happy I did it and that those people got help. I didn't play it for being an actor. I, I knew in my heart that I would do this one day and I didn't need a transfer to do that. And I didn't do it for my parents because they were against it. <laughs> I didn't do it for my friends. I did it. I didn't even do it for myself. I did it for myself three years ago. I did it because three years ago, I would have watched this series and felt so empowered and felt so much stronger. That's the reason why I did it. And that's 
kind of the reason why I'm doing everything right now that I'm doing. Because transgender never was a big topic in my life, actually. I don't go around to being like talking about transgender a lot beforehand. But this series has opened me up to the fact that not talking about it actually doesn't help anybody. I beforehand just kind of like, it was a part of my life, but it wasn't a big thing in my life. My friends, I don't have any friends who are transgender. I don't actually have friends who have any gender dysphoria. I have cisgendered heterosexual friends and cisgendered gay and lesbian friends, bisexuals a few, I think, um, who actually came out to me after I came out. So I don't really surround myself with LGBT people only. But now that I have this platform and have this opportunity to talk about it, I understood that this is worth so much and I can help people so much with this and you do, can do too. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's so weird. Like, I feel like I'm talking in circles, but um, transgender became a really big topic for me this year. It didn't before. I mean, obviously I had my um, body dysphoria, my social dysphoria. I had reasons why I started to transition and I um, had the topic in my life because I had to go to a psychologist and stuff like that because in Germany you have to do that one year before you can get testosterone. So that was what it was in my life. It was a part that was separated from my my, my usual life, my casual life, my work, my um, friends, stuff like that. But now it's a part of my life that's way more present and it actually made me feel kind of uncomfortable before because I didn't really want to be limited to being transgender. It's one part of me, yes, and I don't want to be limited to just being that. So that is why it was really weird for me to transition into this phase now. And now it's a part of my life and it's actually not that bad. And I'm still trying to weigh it out so my friends don't compromise me to being transgender. And I think other people try not to do that as well. But now it's a very bigger part. Um, I did face discrimination in my life before. <laughs> um, if it was for work or if it was from people in my private life. I lost friends. I lost a lot of people because I'm transgender. And I got called a lot of names and told a lot of things in my life because I'm trans. And I understand how it feels to have this pressure and have people like rip you apart over something that you can and should and won't change about yourself because it's yourself, it's a part of myself. Um, but to change that, I think if you are not open about it and if you don't talk it's not helping actually when i first got those messages which were really harmful i felt embarrassed about talking about it or telling that um telling my friends or my family that i actually got those messages and i didn't understand quite why but i think it's because having someone rip you apart from your core and quite frankly know what you say it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to yourself because if you talk about it and if you tell someone, it's kind of like admitting that they are right or that they actually are have a power over you, that they're actually able to hurt you. But um, actually staying silent about it, um, not talking about what someone did to you is actually worse and creating the problem. So that's why it's important. And I know there are a lot of people out there who have it way worse. Ah, I'm sorry, what's wrong? Way worse than me. And still, in the end of the day, everyone has their package. Everyone has bad things in their life. Everyone has problems. Everyone has things that they need help with or that is not ideal in their life. You never know what fights someone else is fighting if you meet them. And just because it's maybe not the same fights that you have, they are still valid and they still um, have the same effect on them as they have on you. So um, being like 
open and nice to everybody is, I think, the way to go. Oh, okay, that was long. <laughs> oh my god, I think my, my leg fell asleep while well, I did that. So yeah, as I said before, I'm gonna do it now. Uh, again, in the end, this is my opinion. I'm not a specialist. I don't study those topics. I'm not anything of a teacher or any person who is like specifically trained for this kind of topics. This is just my opinion. I don't represent the whole trans community. I don't represent the LGBT community. I don't represent, I don't know, pansexual community, whatever. Um, this is just what I think and what I think is important. If you are like a follower, I guess, for me, like on my Instagram or on my Twitter and stuff like that, please always know that what I'm putting out there is from me. I am not a neutral person. I'm not. I'm, I have my opinions. I have things that I think, things that I am... Um, uh, that changed that changed or made my opinion as it is today things that happened to me in my life and so what I'm saying is just what I think so yeah, okay so if you try, want to follow me just always know that's what I think and it's not a general thing and yeah Okay, I hope I got my point across better than just two little tweets. And I know there are still some people out there who feel really uncomfortable with my opinions or what I'm saying, and that's fine. That's totally okay. But, um, yeah, just know that if you are gonna stay, like, I don't know how they call it, a follower of mine or something like that, you will get more of my opinions. <laughs> because that's what I'm trying to share, but yeah. <sighs> okay. Okay, I don't know what, where, where I should go with this now. <laughs> oh my god. Thank you all so much for sending all the hearts <laughs> and for understanding. And even if you're like disagreeing, I thank you for listening to my little rant. I mean, I would love to like do more of a conversation, but I don't know how. Like you're writing and then I'm talking and then I'm like on a different topic when you I get to your question. So it's like I don't... Maybe one day we'll find a way to do this. <sighs> That's little hacks for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I think we're already at the end though. <laughs> the sink is off. Okay, do we just want to put some hearts in the chat? Hearts, 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 hearts. Oh my god, I, this was like the bad, just the worst wink I ever did. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I started so low energy today. This was, but I, I was like, I started this. Live stream, I was like, oh, okay, this is gonna be normal live stream, like normal questions about series and stuff. I actually wanted to talk about the Twitter stuff, but I didn't know how to approach it. And then it just started and it didn't stop. <laughs> okay, so this is gonna be over soon and exactly 20 seconds. 
So, all thank you so much for listening to this. It's like kind of weird to end this now because it was like such a long me talking. But yeah, thank you all for being here, being yourself and having your own opinions. <laughs> That's really important. And listening to my stupid words. <laughs>